Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tai. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So you've just bought your shiny new Apple Silicon Mac. It has everything you need, including a fantastic keyboard, the amazing glass trackpad, the 120 hertz pro motion display, and finally Mac OS, the fast bloat-free operating system that we've all come to know and love. And for most people, Mac OS is all you're ever gonna need. There are native Mac ports of virtually every single piece of major software, for example, Chrome, Discord, Photoshop, DaVinci Resolve, and even the Microsoft Office package. However, there are gonna be some situations in which you're gonna to want to run Windows on your Mac in order to get some kind of legacy application working or to play one of the many Windows games which hasn't been ported to the Mac operating system yet. Now in the past, if you used an Intel Mac, you could use something called Boot Camp, which would allow you to natively install the x86 version of Windows 10 or 11 onto your Mac. However, this is no longer possible due to the fact that Apple have moved the Mac lineup onto their own custom ARM architecture, and there are no drivers to get Windows working on M1 or M2 chip computers. So therefore, if you want to get Windows working working locally on your Apple Silicon Mac, then you're going to have to use a virtual machine. And what this is gonna allow you to do is to run a virtual instance of an operating system like Windows 11 ARM in a layer that's actually abstracted from the Mac hardware. And the results can be extremely impressive, all thanks to the speed of the Apple Silicon Mac's hypervisor. The experience can often feel native-like, and for a long time, the Apple Silicon virtualization was actually faster than Microsoft's own Surface ARM lineup. And some implementations, for example, Parallels can actually run AAA titles despite the fact that these are x86 games being emulated by the ARM operating system being virtualized on a Mac. So today what we're going to do is to compare the three main virtual machine software. So there's Parallels which we've just talked about and there's also the free implementations of UTM and also VMware Fusion. And we're going to compare their different prices, how user-friendly they are, their customer service support, their compatibility with Windows games, and also how fast they are and how much power they consume. And this brings us to the sponsor of our video today, which is Ugreen, who have kindly sent me the extremely powerful and compact Ugreen Nexhead 140 watt GAN charger. And I'll definitely say that this is a pretty big upgrade if you use any MacBook. Not only is the Nexode 140 watt substantially smaller than the official Apple charger, but you can also charge three different devices at once using the two USB-C ports or the third USB-A port. I've been using my Nexode 140 watt charger to charge my MacBook Pro, my phone, and also my Steam Deck all at the same time. The speed and size of the charger make it perfect for throwing into a bag and then taking it with you on your travels, especially because the main USB-C port is capable of using the latest Power Delivery 3.1 and is able to charge your MacBook Pro 16 inch from zero to 56% in just 30 minutes, which is 1.8 times faster than using a 65 watt USB-C adapter. So make sure to check out the link at the top of the description. Clicking the link is gonna to help to support the channel and the content that I create. So the first thing that we're gonna look at is the ease of installation because these vary wildly between UTM, VMware Fusion, and also Parallels. So in the first instance, we're gonna compare VMware Fusion and UTM together because you need to download Windows 11 ARM in the same method. You have to go to the Microsoft website, create a Microsoft account if you don't have one already, and then you have to sign up to the Windows Insider program, and then you go back to the website and then download Windows 11 ARM Insider Preview. And then if you're using VMware Fusion, then what you're gonna to have to do is to install Homebrew and then QEMU and then convert the Windows 11 ARM image into a VMDK file. However, if you're using Parallels, then all of those steps with UTM VMware Fusion are completely unnecessary. Within the installation wizard, you can just press get Windows 11 from Microsoft and Parallels will take care of everything else for you. So now what we're gonna do is to compare virtual machine driver support. On VMware Fusion and on UTM, we encounter the same problem. Because the network drivers have not loaded yet, Windows won't let you complete the setup unless you're online. Now there are workarounds to this, which I'll cover in my video tutorials, which I'll leave a link to in the description. However, if you're using Parallels, you can see a pattern here. Parallels is far simpler. Windows is basically a one-click install. You don't have to attend to anything. You don't have to click on anything. It just tells you that the installation is complete and then click to continue. The network drivers are already installed and you can already get online. However, if you're using UTM or VMware Fusion, then you have to install what are called guest tools, which are basically drivers. And you'll need these in order to do something as basic as connecting to the internet or changing the desktop resolution. So this brings us on to graphics and performance. So here I run the Geekbench 5 benchmark and I'm comparing the single and multi-core scores. Now overall, it looks like Parallels is the fastest out of the bunch, both in single core and multi-core scores. 
However, bear in mind that this is all within the margin of error. However, anecdotally, it does feel like Parallels does run smoother and it also feels more stable. And part of the reason for this is that Parallels is the only one of these virtual machine softwares to actually have hardware graphics acceleration. So you can run several DirectX 10 and 11 games, for example, the game Control, and performance is gonna be quite impressive, especially considering how many layers of virtualization and emulation are going on. By contrast, UTM and VMware Fusion only have access to OpenGL, so you can play some 2D games or some very basic 3D games at relatively low frame rates. If you try to run anything remotely challenging, then it's going to crash straight to desktop. And so really, if you're interested in any kind of gaming performance, then Parallels is going to be the only choice for you. And at the end of the day, Parallels is a much more fully developed product with many more features. So let's take the example of copy and pasting. So VMware Fusion and UTM both have the ability to copy and paste text from the Mac host into the Windows 11 ARM guest. However, with Parallels, you can copy and paste text, but you can also copy and paste files as well. And Windows integration is even more well thought out using something called coherence mode. This strips away the Windows 11 desktop background and allows you to interact with individual Windows applications as if they were native macOS apps. And probably the biggest reason for this feature disparity is really down to money. For example, UTM is open source and is completely free to use. And VMware Fusion is in a tech preview at the moment. And although this is a closed source application, this is a piece of software that VMware do not charge money for. By contrast, Parallels is actually quite expensive. The cheapest standard edition is $99.99 .99 per year. However, if you're interested in reducing the price, then make sure to click at the link at the top of the video description. Every new purchase will help to support the channel. And then once you press the buy now new license button, you can enter the coupon code AppleWiki10. If you press the apply button here, then what you're gonna get is a 10% discount. So the biggest limitation of the standard edition is the fact that we are limited with our virtual RAM and virtual CPU cores. However, my testing, most software and games seem to work great at the four CPU core limit, so I'd recommend sticking with the cheaper option. Now, Parallels is definitely on the expensive end of this virtual machine software. However, Parallels runs Windows 11 ARM the fastest. It has the most integrations and features with macOS, and it also includes phone and email support. However, if you want to pick something that's actually free, then it's a choice between UTM and VMware Fusion. Now, VMware Fusion, despite being developed by the large company VMware, their Apple Silicon Mac offering is a little bit half-baked. It's harder to install Windows 11 ARM, and support came very late in the day compared to Parallels and UTM. I actually prefer UTM a lot more due to its open source nature. It receives far more updates, and it's a lot easier to get direct support as well. You can join their Discord server and talk directly to developers and supporters, and the community feels a lot more active. So Parallels remains the best method of running Windows 11 on a Mac. If you wanted to try it out for free, you can use the 14-day completely free trial. Check the link in the description. And if you're worried about having to pay to activate Windows in a virtual machine, then make sure to watch this video before you make a huge mistake. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.